Okay, this is this is going to be a very complex how-to. Full disclosure, fair warning, I am not a medical doctor. I am reading, I am observing, and quoting information on the website of the National Institute of Health and information shared by various doctors. Again, I am not sharing my information with you as I am not a doctor. Listen. Wow. So I am on the National Health Institute of Health website, and I'm <coughs> going over this peer-reviewed study about, well, let's read the title of it. COVID-19 mRNA, mRNA vaccines, lessons learned from the registrational trials and global vaccine campaign. Now in this, look at all, look at all these names attached to this. And, and what's more telling to me than anything is came back and retracted this. In other words, they said, oh, this, this can't be right. Yeah, after so many errors and so many things the NIH and the WHO said, uh, you know, this is safe and effective. This is going to stop this, uh, make it so you can't, if you get this vaccine, you, you won't be able to become infected. You won't be able to spread. And then they had to retract that. And so many, so many errors. And now they finally, we've, after the dust has settled, we, we find, go on, go on out. We find this review, this article that explains the chicanery in, the, in these trials and the fudging of the math and the numbers. And then they retract it. Okay, so, um, and so many of us know so many stories of people, uh, are they anecdotal? You know, the neighbor who got the vaccine, my neighbor, and then got, uh, you know, had a stroke. Uh, family members who have gotten a vaccine and then gotten cancer, young and old. My best friend from childhood, whose doctor told him after he got the vaccine and, and had a stroke that, it was caused by the vaccine. His doctor told him that. He, uh, my wife's uh, aunt who got the vaccine and then within a month was dead. And just numerous, numerous, call them anecdotal if, if we have to. My father-in-law who was in remission, had a blood cancer and everything was fine for years. And he kept getting those boosters and the cancer came back. It, you know, are those anecdotal stories? Sure they are, until they're not anymore. But this thing is so telling. It's so telling about how they conducted the, the tests early on and they had the placebo group and the vaccinated group. And then some months in, they went ahead and vaccinated the placebo group. Why would you do that? A grade schooler would tell you that's not control. That's not how you do a test. But <clears throat> am I a doctor? Am I giving medical information? No, I am not. Because uh, every time I tried, to, I, I tried in the past to get information like this out on the platforms, the videos were taken down. We were we were getting strikes. We were getting sanctioned. We were told we need to be educated before we spoke. Uh, literally, they were saying we, we you need to go through this question and answer session uh, to get your status back and be able to post again. But I'm not I'm not telling you medical information. I'm quoting it. I'm showing you. Go to the NIH and read that article. Look it up. It's called COVID-19 mRNA Vaccines Lessons Learned from the Registrational Trials and Global Vaccination Campaign. If you look that up and if you take, a, take the time, as I've told you many times, I have a seventh grade education at best. I can go through this stuff and kind of understand what's going on and what's being said. You don't need a doctor to be able to be a doctor to be able to interpret this. But what I'm seeing quite clearly is that if you're disseminating information that fits the narrative of the NIH, the CDC, the WHO, and the pharmaceutical companies, your information is taken as gold standard, right? And if you are respectable doctors who have a dissenting opinion, a different idea of what's going on, of the mechanics of this virus and and the how, how improperly this uh, this 
vaccine was prepared in such a short period of time, then you're very likely to be sanctioned and shut down and shut up, right? That's just not fair. It's not right. We need we need differences. We need different and various opinions and people taking part in this discussion. We don't just need one side to tell us what the truth is. Why do I even have to be explaining this? Um, listen to... I was listening to earlier a doctor who was reviewing this paper. Her name is Dr. Annette Bosworth, and she's explaining how her big mea culpa about how she didn't listen to people like me and like some of you who were saying, don't be in such a hurry to put that stuff in your body. Don't be in such a hurry. Listen to what's going on. Read, listen to some of these doctors who are being shut up and persecuted because they're saying and telling a different story. And the, the fact that they, they got the, the definition, the very definition of the word vaccine changed in the dictionary is very telling. Vaccine, if you go to an old bookstore, if you go to uh, um, the website, there's a web website called Wayback Time Machine, and look at the definition of vaccine prior to like uh, 2021. It was a dead or attenuated virus was what a vaccine was. It came from the, the root word was vaca, cow. It was, uh, it was from cowpox when they did a the German doctor or Swiss doctor did a put a, a living virus on a cut on a boy's arm. Uh, the the cowpox virus and and the boy got sick and then the boy got well because of the vaccine. It was anyway. They changed that Vax, and, and they're saying in this study that this should not have been called a vaccine. It should have been called a gene therapy or some such. It's all in there on the NIH website. I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you anything. But we've been trying to say this is not fair. It's not right. And we've gotten this in, in, <laughs> in billions of people. This doctor is saying, I vaccinated myself and I vaccinated my children with this stuff. And it's causing great harm. And I'm scared and I'm sorry. These are doctors apologizing. We're going to have these people coming out of the woodwork now. The people, anyway, again, I am not spreading misinformation. I'm quoting from the National Institute of Health. I'm referring to the National Institute of Health website. And the fact that the, the article is retracted should not be should not be a good thing to you. It shouldn't give you, it shouldn't, in my opinion, it shouldn't make you feel calm or have less fear. It should make you feel more afraid. Why are they saying this is, why are they retracting this? It's like all the information that was given and then they retracted their own information. Like you can't spread the virus once you've had the vaccine. You see what I'm saying? And, that, and every time the doctors who, have questions or have very different opinion about this speak they they knock them back they knock them down they tell them they can't talk they tell them they're not well their voices aren't welcome if I mean, they're shutting down free speech anyway i'm i'm sorry i just i just had to rant about it but yeah listen to this uh dr dr boz it's, it's she's really hard to listen to because she's very well no offense to her, nice, nice lady. Uh, you know, kudos to her for doing this this mea culpa. But she's very f discombobulated and fragmented in this video. But it's a very, it's very much worthwhile and very much worth listening to her. Um, but she really breaks it down and she really points out how they fudged the numbers and how. They, you know, they didn't even they didn't even use uh, pregnant women in the trials, and basically said it's okay for pregnant women and stuff like that. Just ask questions, and I think I think a lot of people have have come to the realization that maybe this isn't for them. A little bit too late, uh, but if you read. This peer-reviewed article, I personally trust no one until you give me a damn good reason to trust you. I didn't take the damn vaccine. My wife didn't take it. 
my daughter didn't take it. Sadly, my son did, but he didn't. He didn't consult with us, and I, you know, I wish every day, every day, I wish that he hadn't. Um, but I've never even had a flu shot because I don't trust this stuff, and I'm not telling you what to do, but insist on the preservation of medical autonomy. Your your own your own health is is up to you. Is is those are your choices. These are not government edicts or mandates. This is, this is up to you. And by medical autonomy, I certainly don't mean the taking of an unborn life, the killing of an unborn child. That has nothing to do with medical autonomy. That is killing an unborn child. That's something completely different. That's another person's body you're controlling, not your own. Have questions, ask questions, start listening to the doctors, the doctors with varying opinions. At least listen to uh, Dr. Robert Malone, one of the creators of the mRNA vaccine, mRNA technology, okay? We should, we should not be calling that a vaccine, in my opinion, again. Uh, so Dr. Robert Malone, uh, Dr. John Campbell, uh, Dr. Peter McCullough, Dr. Mercola, uh, there are, there are, I can't even scratch the surface of the list of doctors now who have come out and said, come out with a different opinion, different point of view and been shot down. This is just like during the, the, the first, the initial phase of the global warning, warming uh, information, the, the scientists that were pro, you know, global warming, we gotta, we've got to stop this, they said the debate is over before they even gave the scientists who, were, who had a different opinion a chance to speak and be heard, they said, no, 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 the debate is over, which is the opposite of science. Listen, when your argument is too fragile to withstand dissenting opinions or debate, your argument isn't worth much, is it? In science, the debate is never over. The questions never end. You always change, things are always evolving. Information is always evolving and changing. So they, the, these elitists who control speech and science and medicine say, you can't speak because you're not approved. You're not one of the approved people. Who are the approved people? Are they approved by big pharma? Are they approved by corrupt people in government? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying I know, but I have questions and we should all have questions. But I just think... <clears throat> I think it's going to be very a very slow process because a lot of people have a lot of vested interest in not getting the truth now because they've done and said things that they're going to be very, very, very sorry for and very accountable for. So this is why we're, we've got we're, it's the drag the dragging, kicking, and screaming of people to a potentially different truth and a potentially different reality. We're seeing the shift now, and it. Talk about trying to shove a bobcat back in a bag. You can't put this cat back in the bag. By retracting that article did, a, in my opinion, a very bad thing. Uh, but it's still there. It's still on the website. It just has retracted, slashed through the whole thing. Even more reason to go look at it. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, and thank you all for talking with your family members and trying to be sober and sane about this ongoing uh, uh, discussion. Believe in free speech, okay? Believe in it, insist on it. Thank you.